What about the the future and the research side of what you guys do? Um, and maybe before I do want to get into maybe areas of research that you're either about to publish or your team's working on. Um, but you know, what's your current assessment of where the market is? You've talked about huge growth. Mm-hmm. Where is the growth coming today? And then we can talk about where you think it's going to come from tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It, it's retail. I mean, just because the volumes are so high. So if you look at like retail apparel, so that $21 billion or so tax last year, about $20 billion went on retail apparel items. Before COVID, market estimates were about maybe 100 billion units of apparel globally. And we've worked with a lot of those uh, apparel manufacturers, and we know that once they get to about 35% of their stock, then they'll just flip over and tag everything. So we're at about 20 billion units right now. Once we hit 35 billion units, and I'm estimating that's probably going to be in two to three years, then boom, that kicks on and that takes out the last, you know, 70% or so. So that'll flip over most of the, the retail apparel space. Um, And then um, we, this year moving into kind of electronics and toys and sporting goods and all that stuff. And that's a whole nother area. And again, this is all passive UHF side. Mm-hmm. So um, the growth is healthy on passive UHF, but I think from a research perspective, we're very interested, less so in one particular RFID technology. We're more interested in the concept of serialized item data sharing. This is a big problem, right? Because we just don't have a way to do it effectively. It is, it is the weak link. You, you look online about UHF RFID and you'll see all these papers and Wikipedia entries. Oh, man, we're going to put tags on the factory. We're going to light up the whole supply chain and read it here and here and this port and this ship and this DC and all the way out to the store. We don't do any of that. We put a tag on at the factory and we read it at the store right before it goes home with the customer and we miss all that stuff in between. It's because we don't trust each other. It's because we don't allow each of those partners to continue with a serialized data ledger and send it from partner to partner through the global supply chain. It would be the world's worst game of technological telephone and it wouldn't work, right? We don't use the same units. We ship stuff by case level here. We do by pallet level there. We do by weight there, container here, then back down to the unit level. So um, uh, we use EDI, which is ancient. I mean, that stuff was from the days of modems. They still charge by the bit for some of that. Um, so ASN accuracy is horrible. Like there has been no major innovation or change in supply chain um, in decades and uh, we've got to get away from quantity level accounting and move down to unit level accounting. And that is going to require a huge overhaul in all of our inventory management systems and our data transition systems. And that is across technology. It doesn't matter if it's you know active RFID or passive RFID or QR codes or 2D data matrix. Do not care. If we're applying a serialized identity to each item, the future is how do we accurately push that data and then pull it back down so that we can trust each other when we're talking about the, the full supply chain. And, and that is kind of the, the, man, we got research there for decades. I mean, it's, that, that, that's a never ending process and that's the, the ultimate goal, I think, uh, from us, from any of our academic projects as we push forward. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I was nodding so vigorously. I felt like I was, I was at a Led Zeppelin concert, headbanging uh, <laughs> th- th- this. Uh, uh, I feel like what's held us back is you know, part of it is cost of infrastructure. And I think that's changing uh, rapidly. And obviously, William has an agenda there with Bluetooth and so forth. But I think more generally, it's what you just said. It's, it's data sharing or lack of it. Because if we're going to get transparency in supply chains no one owns the whole supply chain or very rarely there's some vertically integrated retailers that do but you know the mass of retail is wholesale where goods are handed off to distributors and to retailers and if we're gonna solve climate change it's about it's you know let's make half of what we're making let's cut the waste and get visibility through that supply chain so that the maker of the product is not just seeing it when it rolls out of the shipping dock door. They're getting continuous visibility of what's on the shelves and what's in the pantry of of the consumers and the fridge. And if we do that, it can completely transform the world that we we, we live in, uh, in terms of quality and waste and uh, business models. 
Mm-hmm. We throw away yeah. we throw away almost a third of the food we ship. That's ridiculous. That's irresponsible. Like we shouldn't do that. I mean, it sounds common sense, and nobody that makes it or sells it wants to either. But like, the fundamental problem we have is trust. We do not trust each other, especially in business partners. If you go to any retailer. They're going to have a whole floor that focuses on claims. If you go to any supplier and you ask them what they can do with serialized data, the first thing they always say is claims. There's just all this like Spider-Man pointing fingers at each other across the supply chain where, well, this didn't go there. It's your fault. It's that fault. I want to charge you this. I want to charge you that. We spend untold amounts of time and money and effort trying to figure out what did happen versus what was supposed to happen just because we don't trust each other and, and anything that we can do to help increase that level of trust means that we can decrease the level of operational cost, increase efficiency, emissions, and all that stuff goes away. We don't have to make so much junk to sell the same amount. We can get by with a lot less and still increase, you know, uh, uh, sales and, and use of all the things we make. Wonderful. Thanks for watching this clip from the Mr. Beacon podcast here on YouTube. You can listen to the rest of this episode on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed it, please like and share this video. And be sure to subscribe for more weekly videos. For more information about Williot and IoT Pixels, head on over to williot.com.